I adored this book, but it's just not one I speak about enough, ever. So do you think I deserve better than that? Yes. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan if you are new here and this is Meg with Books. No, that sounds weird. This is my channel. This is my booktube channel where we do reading vlogs and book recommendation videos. So when I'm filming this, we are super close to 5k, which is just like my mind can't actually wrap around it. 5k was my end of year goal. Thank you. That's all, I, I don't know what else to say. Thank you. It's it's amazing. It's so amazing to me. At one point in the year, earlier, a couple of months ago, I thought, like, I'm not going to hit it. I'm not going to hit 5k. When I was, like, 2.5k, I thought, it's not going to happen. And now we're only, like, 100 away. I'm filming this video just under a week before it comes out, so we may have even hit it. I have no idea, but um, if you are new here, make sure you hit subscribe down below. Today, we're throwing it back to the best time in my life. <laughs> Getting home from school, sticking on Disney Channel, and watching the OG Disney Channel films. I'm talking the peak of the Disney Channel here. From like 2005 to like 2010, 2011, that was like the pinnacle of excellence on the Disney Channel. I sat down with the president of Disney Channel and I said, I want to make history. I have such fun memories of all of these shows. And like, sometimes just a bit of nostalgia is healthy. And sometimes I'm just wishing, I wish I could read a book with similar vibes or similar aspects to those shows that I loved. So what we're going to be doing today is recommending books based on those original Disney Channel shows. I've picked the five Disney Channel shows that I think were like, elite like the five elite ones if there's any that you want me to do this again with let a gal know i'm also thinking of doing this with the disney channel original movies because they slapped these five shows to me are like everything disney was about so let's just get into it i'm so excited i'm so excited so the first show i'm gonna recommend based off of is hannah montana go hannah, go hannah. AKA, she carried it on her back. She carried Disney Channel on her back at like 13 years old. Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana was out here carrying the whole franchise on her back. So for this, I'm looking for a book that is carrying their genre on their backs. It's the pinnacle of excellence. Hannah Montana, best show. Best show Disney has had, in my opinion. I'm looking for a book here that's all about putting on a show, putting on performance. Not necessarily it may be in the literal sense of the word, like putting on a show, like singing or whatever, but like has a real dramatic concept to it is a is a performance you know like is dramatic is everything gives you everything gives you ingenuity gives you excellence oh my god i love it We're also going to talk about a book where disguises are apparent or identities may be confusing and later come into fruition and essentially the best the icon the standard to which we need to hold everyone else to. And so for this, I'm going to recommend two books. And are we surprised? It is both of Erin Morgerson's books, The Night Circus and The Starless Sea. Erin Morgerson is carrying fantasy on her back. She is giving us everything. She's giving the girls what they want. For what? I'm you. In my opinion, these are two of the best fantasy books out there. And these are a performance. They are a show. They are fully crafted, fully actualized. They are giving you everything. The power that that has, the intelligence that that has, the clearance that that has, the access that that has, the influence that that has. They are so imaginative and so complex. Just, Just like how it's set itself. It's so magical. And what I love about this is that there's so many little details in this that either end up being really relevant to the end of the story or are just like there to enhance. They don't really have any real meaning towards the story and plot as a whole, but they are just there to like improve the atmosphere. I love when books tell us information and we go down little tangents that don't necessarily contribute to the end result, the end of the plot, but they're just there to like enhance the atmosphere and give us complexity to our characters. In these, identities are often mysterious, not everything is always as it seems, and the best, the pinnacle. Honestly, no one else could ever. Yup, 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 yup. Yep. No one else does it better than Hannah Montana. No one else does it better than Erin Morganson. Have you ever seen Erin Morganson and Hannah Montana in the same room? I would like to talk about it. I think we should have that conversation. 
So next is That's So Raven. That's so Raven. Yep, that's me. One of the most funny, comedic, joyful shows, Miss Raven. My god. My god, like, just a living legend. Raven set the path for girls like Hannah Montana to follow. We have to recognise the legacy here. She was the trendsetter. She was it. And what I loved about the show was that it was so joyful, like one of the most joyful shows, but also managed to teach us life lessons and about worldly issues. Like it touched a lot on weight and body image. It touched on racism. And like, sis should have not been the only one out here doing it. We have to recognize that. You know, I think that with Raven being a plus size black girl, the onus was put on her to like, we're getting into a bit of a Disney critique here, but like, explain why you're like that. You know, Disney were, were in my opinion, bad at tackling issues like body image and racism in their other shows. They only had to tackle it in Raven because she was not the standard of what they wanted. You know, they wanted skinny white girls. And so this should not have been the only show out here tackling those issues. But all the same, an outstanding show. You also had a great group of friends and also a lovely family dynamic, like a really close-knit family. Please, I'm watching a cash channel. Videos! Cash! Videos! Cash! So for this, I have chosen You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I keep speaking about this book. I really, really loved it. And it's kind of like a book that has stuck with me a lot. Again, this book is so joyful. It's all about our protagonist's joy, but also educating us on things like racism. And then this one also particularly like class or economic issues. The book also gave me those really like high school chick flick, early noughties vibes. And so it really gives me that like Raven era vibes. So this is about Liz Lighty who really wants to go to this prestigious college, but her scholarship falls through. And so she figures the way to get the money to go is to run for prom queen because prom queen is a big, big deal where she comes from. There's a big scholarship for prom king and queen she lives in like small town america where like being prom queen is the most important thing you can be in your whole life you know where the adults think that prom is the most important thing they still live off of prom like 20 years later could not be me but anyway i'm not getting involved i'm here to enjoy myself gc style do you know what i mean i just want to be me liz wants to scam the system and she wants to become prom queen so that she can go to her dream college however she starts falling in love with another one of the girls running for prom queen and it's just a really really lovely story there's also a really great group of friends in this and i loved her relationship with her brother her relationship with her brother had a lot of really lovely dynamics to it where they were kind of like really really close and kind of like they only had each other in some ways because her mother has passed away but at the same time, she's really, really protective of her brother. And so I feel like that. So Raven had a really strong sibling relationship and this definitely does too. It was one of my favorite aspects of the book and not something that is talked about a lot. And I wished it had been a bigger part of the book because I thought their relationship was so lovely. Next is A Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Oh my God, this show. Oh. <laughs> so the core of this is a amazing sibling relationship. <laughs> said it would be a honey missed auburn honey you missed auburn big time so we know the book that i'm recommending has to have a great sibling relationship at its core these guys were constantly getting up to shit they were constantly getting up to mischief and it was just a really fun dynamic to watch i also feel like this had a great cast of characters zach and cody were definitely the stars of the show but like the wider minor characters or you know ensemble were really strong like can we talk about quickly ashley tisdale playing a genius in this and then playing sharpay who's dumb in high school musical like that woman's range knows no bounds ashley tisdale does not get enough credit for this recommendation i've definitely played up on the sibling relationship and it is a pinch of magic by michelle harrison so this is about three sisters who are trapped by this family curse they go on a really like crazy mischievous adventure to try and end the curse and this is a middle grade i really loved this the younger sister in particular is very mischievous she definitely reminded me of zach and cody in like the early early episodes this has a really strong world building and a really strong cast of characters i love the atmosphere in this like oh my god the atmosphere was top notch 
I love everything about this. I really want to get more into middle grade and this was one that I loved. I know this is one a lot of people have been reading. It was so engrossing and I just really feel like the familial relationship is literally the core of this, like it is the core of the show. Next show is Sunny with a Chance. In my opinion, underrated. So Beauty and I are getting Manny Patties because I'm throwing a ball tonight. It's gonna be very A-list. There's gonna be fairies, squad mothers, singing mice, and the whole bibbity bobbity thing. <laughs> Demi Lovato is one of my favorite Disney Channel stars. I adored her. My recommendation for this is not enemies to lovers. However, her, was it Chad? Okay, no, it is Chad. <gasps> <laughs> her and Chad set the blueprint for Enemies to Lovers. Like, in my opinion, every book that's written since then with Enemies to Lovers is influenced by Chad and Sunny. My recommendation for this is a bit left field, but I think it's kind of more personal to how I felt watching the show. I always saw Sunny with a Chance as about trying to fit in. Like, I feel like Sunny always just really wanted to fit in and really never felt like she did, you know, coming into Hollywood, into this big show and feeling a bit insecure about her position in it all. Also because they were all stars on the show together, it almost didn't feel like that, I mean, Sunny was obviously the star, but it felt a lot more equal, the casting. Whereas with something, something like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, you definitely had the stars. Hannah Montana, you definitely had the star. Whereas I feel like Sunny with a Chance was a bit more equal, like a gang of characters rather than like your main star and the ensemble. So for this, I'm gonna recommend Dig by A.S. King. I adored this book, but it's just not one I speak about enough. Enough, ever. So do you think I deserve better than that? Yes. A key theme of this is wanting to fit in and not feeling like you fit in. This is a weird ass book. If you're not into weird books, you won't enjoy this. I don't get to talk about this enough because it's so difficult to categorize it or recommend it in certain videos because it's all over the place. But in this we have like five main characters who are all living different lives and you know they're kind of tied into each other somehow but you don't know how originally. It's very difficult in my memory to remember what you know at the beginning of this. It's about potato farmers, a family of potato farmers. I was like... Uh... But at its core this is about that teenage awkwardness but also about, this is gonna sound very strange that this is the two themes of the book, but also about like white supremacy and how that flourishes and grows in some more rural, small town parts of America. It deals with, you know, childhood trauma and stuff like that. It is a brilliant book, so weird, so weird, but so good. The girl called Loretta in this really reminds me of, I had to look at the character's name up, Alison, the girl, the young girl in Sun of the Chance they really remind me of each other. Like I kind of picture Loretta as Alison. I don't know why, they just give me the same vibe. So please read Dig if you haven't. It's such a hard book to explain and to recommend, but I love it so much. And then the last show I'm gonna recommend based off of is Wizards of Waverly Place. Now, Wizards of Waverly Place wasn't my favorite purely because of my like irrational childhood hatred, not hatred, dislike of Selena Gomez because I was team Nylee, bitch. Nick Jonas and Miley Cyrus, not Nick Jonas and Selena. I just didn't like her because of that. I know it's irrational. What, do I look like I listen to fucking Selena Gomez? Really ask yourself, do I look like I listen to her? But in my head I was like, what, Selena Gomez? <laughs> I don't like you. I think I still watched every single episode of Wizards of Waverly Place though. Like I'm pretty sure I've seen every single episode more than once. And there were some really great aspects to it as well. As well as having, I think, I feel like every Disney Channel show has like a good family dynamic. Magic is at the core of the show. Whimsical magic. Do we know where we're going with this? Alongside a, uh, you know, a lead female protagonist who takes no bullshit. And for this, I'm gonna recommend, are we ready? Oh, what did we think that was? <gasps> That's what she said. And you know what? I what was that? Okay, James. The Verona Nightingale series, The Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. AKA the best magic system, the best magic vibes, the most whimsical vibes I have ever read. I remember I said, didn't I say a couple videos ago that I was, I wanted to do a read along for this? I think I still do. So maybe we'll do it November, December, January. That's what I'm thinking at the moment. So let me know if you're interested in doing a read along. I will sort that out soon. But this is one of my favorite series of all time. When you first meet the protagonist in this, Vasya, she is not hard as nails. Like she, she's kind of, she's a young girl. She's very young. However, along the course of this trilogy, by the end, sis ain't taking no bullshit. Sis has no time for your bullshit. Sis is too busy saving the world. 
to take any of your bullshit. Don't care anymore. And I, and I never really have done. So in this, we follow Vasya as she grows up and she can see kind of like the house spirits in old Russian folklore. The house, house spirits like a big thing and she can see them and she knows the old magic of Russia and that old magic kills me every time. I don't know which one is my favourite. I think the girl in the tower is my favourite. I love the political elements of this, the familial elements of this. However, the whole series, in my opinion, is five stars. If you're looking for something magical, like Wizard Waverly Place, this is just the first place that I'd point you. Honestly, you don't need to go any further. This is everything. I can't wait to reread this. So there we go. That is all my recommendations based off of the Disney Channel shows. If you want me to do this again or with the movies, let a gal know because I just want to relive my childhood. <laughs> let me know also which of these Disney Channel shows was your favourite and I will see you very, very soon in another video. Bye!